Hello, Map 2 Extended. This is Mrs. Bricky, and this video is for Unit 1, Lesson 3. We'll be multiplying polynomials today. Oh, sorry, that's from a bell work we did in class. All right, so um, I wanted to start by just reminding you about the distributive property of multiplication. So if we have a number like 5 and it's multiplied by a binomial like 3x minus 4, um, we have to remember that that 5 is going to multiply both parts. Um, 5x times 3x is 15x, and 5x times negative 4 is negative 20. So the 5 multiplies both uh, both terms of the poly of the binomial, sorry. Um, and that works the same way with negative numbers. We can distribute a negative number. In this case, we would get 56n, and then a negative times by a negative is a positive. So negative 56n plus 7. And we can even distribute or use the distributive property of multiplication to multiply uh, a variable uh, monomial with a binomial. So 2x multiplied by x gives us 2x squared, and then 2x multiplied by 3 gives us 6x. So my answer has two terms, and um, those powers changed because I was multiplying by an x. Um, it's, it is a good idea to always report your final answer in standard form when you're multiplying polynomials. So in this first example, we're going to multiply by x. So it's 6x minus x squared. Um, those terms are not in standard form. So we would say that the answer is negative x squared plus 6x. Um, so in this next example, we're multiplying by 5h squared. And we're multiplying first by the term 2h. So that will give us 10. And our h is going to have a third power. Don't forget that there's a, an h inside with the 2, so that's going to give us a total of h to the third power there. And then if we multiply the 5h squared by 7, we get 35h squared. So 10h to the third plus 35h squared. And then finally, um, it doesn't have to be a binomial. We can have a trinomial or more terms um, so if, if we just want to multiply by 8x squared, we just multiply each of those three terms in the trinomial. So we would first have 24x uh, to the power of 6. Now remember, this is a case where we would add those exponents because we're multiplying an x squared by an x to the 4th. So that's an x to the 6th. And then we have an 8x squared times negative 5x. So that's going to be a negative 40x to the power of 3. And then finally, our last term is going to be a 72x uh, squared. So there's our answer, 24x to the 6th minus 40x to the 3rd plus 72x squared. Um, so when we are using the multiplication, uh, the distributive property of multiplication, um, in the past, we've always been distributing some kind of monomial, maybe just a whole number, maybe a, mul a number multiplied by a variable. Um, it doesn't, the, we, we can distribute really anything we want. I can distribute a smiley face. It just means that each of the terms that I'm multiplying by are going to be multiplied by that smiley face. So 3x times smiley face minus 4 times smiley face. So sometimes the thing that we need to distribute is a binomial. If we wanted to distribute this binomial x plus 6, I would have a 3x multiplied by that x plus 6. And then I would have the negative 4 multiplied by the x plus 6. So we can distribute that binomial. But then once we distribute the binomial, you might be thinking to yourself, man, we got to do some more distributing because now that we've written out this um, product, now we need to distribute that 3x. So this will be a 3x squared plus 18x. And we can also distribute the negative 4 here. So that would be minus 4x minus 24. 
a lot of times when we're multiplying binomials, we'll get to a point where we notice that we have some terms that we can combine. So in this case, we can combine together the 18x and the negative 4x. So our final answer will be 3x squared plus 14x minus 24. Now, this idea of, of distributing a binomial and taking two steps here to do this process, so like the first step of distributing the binomial and then the second step of distributing again, um, a lot of times that's a lot to write out when we're doing a bunch of problems. And um, so we are going to kind of learn a little shorthand way to distribute that. So, you know, what we're really doing is if we go back, I can show you what we're really doing is first distributing the 3x and then second distributing the negative 4. Um, we're, we're just doing a distribution twice. Uh, so this is a fast way of kind of doing it and showing your workout. Um, I've got the 3x plus 4, and I'm multiplying it by a 2x minus 5, so this is a different problem. Um, but I can think about first distributing that 3x. 3x multiplied by 2x gives me 6x squared. 3x multiplied by negative 5 gives me negative 15x. And then I can think about multiplying by 4. So 4 times 2x uh, is 8x, and 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. So you just think about both of the terms in that first polynomial and distribute each of them individually. And again, it's really common to have two terms that can combine. So our final answer here would be 6x squared minus 7x minus 20. So let's try a couple of those where we just double distribute. So we've got a times a, so that's a squared. a times 2 is 2a. 3 times a is 3a. And 3 times 2 is 6. So our final answer when we combine those like terms is going to be a squared plus 5a plus 6. Now, I think some of you have learned how to do this before in another class. So if you have learned to do this in a prior class, I would challenge you to try to start getting so that you can look at this and go straight to the answer and see if you can do it mentally without writing this middle line. Just if you need a challenge, it's absolutely fine um, to write out all of the multiplication steps. But just if you need a challenge, try to start doing these in your head. So um, let's distribute this 4r plus 2. So distributing the 4r first, we get 4r squared. 4r times negative 1 is negative 4r. So we're done distributing the 4r, and now we can distribute the 2. So this is plus 2r and then minus 2. Those middle terms can combine, so we've got 4r squared minus 2r minus 2 as our answer. Okay, let's try this one. This one's kind of cool. Uh, 2x plus 3 times 2x minus 3. Those two factors look almost the same, but they're a little bit different. Okay, 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times negative 3 is negative 6x. 3 times 2x is positive 6x, and 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. So you might have noticed, hey, look at those middle terms. They are opposites, so they add up to a big fat 0. So that means our final answer is a binomial. It's 4x squared minus 9. It just has two terms. Um, that'll always be the case when you multiply two um, factors that look very similar and they just have opposite signs. So for example, if I multiplied together x plus 5 and x minus 5, I'll have that middle term cancel out and I'll get x squared minus 25. Okay, this uh, last one on the screen is multivariables. We've got x's and y's, so we just need to be a little extra careful as we're doing it. Um, x times 2x is 2x squared x times negative 3y is negative 3xy. I usually put the variables in alphabetical order because remember that multiplication is commutative. So negative 3y times x is the same as negative 3x times y. So the order of those letters doesn't 
matter if it's a little product like that. So I just choose to write it as x times y. Okay, so now we're going to distribute the negative 5y. Negative 5y times 2x is negative 10xy. And again, I like to put the letters in alphabetical order there, the variables. Um, negative 5y times uh, negative 3y is positive 15y squared. So these two terms in the middle can combine. Um, it's, it's sometimes tricky if people end up not putting those letters in the same order. They might be wondering or may, maybe don't realize that they can combine them. Like if you had written negative 3yx minus 10xy, you might be uncertain if you can combine them. But because multiplication is commutative, we can change the order of those letters. They do have the same variables and the variables they have have the same powers. So we can combine them. So our final answer here would be 2x squared minus 13xy plus 15 y squared. What does it mean for something to be squared? 7 squared, x squared. Well, what it means for something to be squared is that we times it by itself. So x squared just means x times x. In class, I had him think about that for a minute. Um, so when we think about squaring binomials, like something like this, um, it's important for you to realize that it is not, uh, we can't distribute powers. Exponents don't distribute. So 5 plus x in parentheses squared is not 25 plus x squared. We can't distribute. Uh, it's a common, common error that I see uh, all the time in all my classes, even in calculus, sometimes they make this error. Um, what your brain is doing is it's trying to confuse this problem with these two that I have over on the side. Um, we can apply powers to both parts of a monomial. So we can square the 5 and square the x here to get 25x squared. But that's because this is a product. It's the same as 5x times 5x. And we can rearrange the order uh, to get that 25x squared. So... Uh, exponents can be applied to parts of a monomial, but exponents don't distribute over addition. Only multiplication is distributive. 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times x is 2x. We can distribute a constant. Uh, we can't distribute a power. Uh, squaring means multiply something by itself. It means 5 plus x times 5 plus x. So we still have that 25 for sure, but we have a 5x, another 5x, and we have an x squared. So in standard form, we have uh, x squared plus 10x plus 25 as our answer. So you can see that what happens when you accidentally distribute powers is you lose that important part of the polynomial, which is its middle term. So be very careful about powers on polynomials. So 3x minus 1 squared means take a 3x minus 1 and multiply it by itself. So we get 9x squared minus 3x minus 3x and negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. It's really easy to accidentally turn that into a 2 or a negative 2 or even a negative 1 so be very careful on that. Um, for the video I'm going to skip this one but if you want to try it your answer should be pause your video and you can try it and check it out. It should be this. I'm not showing any steps here, so you would probably want to show out steps and see if you get that. Okay, um, we're going to just practice now multiplying a binomial by a trinomial. None of the rules are any different here. We just need, um, we just have a few more terms, so we have a little bit more distributing to do. So again, I would start by distributing this x. And I'm going to multiply it by every single term of this trinomial. So x times x is x to the third. x times negative 2x is negative 2x squared. x times negative 7 is negative 7x. 
Now I want to show you a strategy here. When we were multiplying binomials, we were just making these big long lists of terms. But with trinomials, we end up with so many terms that a list like that uh, starts to get overwhelming to sort through. So when I go to distribute the 5, I'm going to be strategic about where I write my products. 5 times x squared is 5x squared. I'm going to write it beneath the like term. What that's going to allow me to do in a minute is just add up the columns to get my final answer. 5 times negative 2x is negative 10x. 5 times negative 7 is negative 35. So now my final answer is going to be x to the third, and if I add those two together, I get 3x squared. Add these two together, negative 17x minus 35. So that's my answer. So pause the video for a second and try this next problem out, and then I'm going to write the answer down. But So pause for a second and see if you can get the correct answer. I'm not going to show the steps here. I'm just going to show the answer. 3x to the third minus 23x squared plus 31x minus 6. So if you have questions on that or you get something different and you need some help understanding why, let me know and I'll help you. Okay, we're going to look at what happens if we want to multiply three things together, three factors. So I've got a, a monomial 3x, I want to multiply it by the binomial x plus 8, and I want to multiply it also by the binomial 3x minus 4. So um, I want you to think about what you would do with numbers. Like if I ask you what's 2 times 5 times 19, uh, and you didn't have a calculator, you might first think about what's 2 times 5. Well, that's 10. So this is the same as 10 times 19, which is 190. So breaking that problem into parts, um, you know, thinking about these two first and then finishing the product, that's the idea that we want to use for uh, multiplying three factors together. Um, what you don't want to do is like just start swooping everything, okay? That will give you the wrong answer for sure. So we want to just pick two of them to multiply together. And it doesn't matter which two you pick. Sometimes people like to do those two first. Uh, sometimes people like to do these two first. You, you can follow either path and you'll get the correct answer. I am going to start by just distributing the 3x and multiplying that by x plus 8. So that gives me 3x squared plus 24x. So I've multiplied those first two together. Now that's just like multiplying the 2 and the 5 together to get a 10. So our next step is to multiply by that third factor, 3x minus 4. So 3x squared times 3x is 9x to the third. 3x squared times negative 4 is negative 12x squared. 24x times 3x is uh, 72x squared, and 24x minus 4, or times, sorry, negative 4 is negative 96x. And just like in prior problems, we, we do have two terms that can combine. So if I go ahead and combine those, my final answer is 9x to the third plus 60x squared minus 96x. Um, this next one, it looks, uh, you know, maybe like you could just distribute the 3 and be done, but don't forget the squared there. Um, squaring something means multiplying it by itself. So we have an x minus 1 being multiplied by itself, and then we also have a 3. Now the 3 is not squared. There is just one factor of 3 there. So be careful that you don't... Um, have an extra 3 pop up in your problem. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and multiply these two together first. And again, I, I don't have to do that. I could distribute the 3 into the x minus 1 first. But just to show you that both ways are valid, I'm going to do sort of a little different this time. So x times x is x squared. x times negative 1 is negative 1x. I have another negative 1x from this combo. And then my, my constant is a 1 at the end. So that's x squared minus 2x plus 1. 
So now I'm going to multiply that by the 3. And so now I'm just distributing that 3. So this is 3x squared minus 6x plus 3. And that would be our final answer, and it's in standard form. Okay, now we're going to get really crazy. Polynomial multiplication on steroids. Uh, I just want to show you uh, one example of a trinomial multiplied by a trinomial. Uh, in this case, I'm going to show you another, you know, strategy that you can use. You can use this strategy for simpler problems, smaller problems if you want. But it's a great strategy for when we're multiplying trinomials. So what you want to do is draw a box where the number of terms matches the number of uh, boxes on the side. So since I have a trinomial and another trinomial, I have three columns and three rows. So you put the one of the polynomials across the top, and you put the other polynomial that you're multiplying down the side, term by term. Oh, that's an 8. It's always helpful if you copy the problem down right. <clears throat> so this just helps me stay very organized, because when I multiply a trinomial by another trinomial, there are going to be nine terms that I get, and then I have to look for ways to combine them or which ones can combine. So um, this just helps you figure out, uh, how, it just helps you to not lose one of the terms, I guess. So this, this first column is going to essentially be me distributing the negative x squared, but it's just going to help me stay organized. So negative x squared times x squared is negative x to the fourth, Negative x squared times negative 8 is a positive 8x to the third. Negative x squared times 3 is negative 3x squared. So now I'm going to move to my next column, which is essentially just me distributing the 4x. So 4x multiplied by x squared is 4x to the third. 4x multiplied by negative 8x is negative 32x squared. And 4x multiplied by 3 is 12x. And then my last column is essentially me distributing that constant of 1. So we get uh, x squared. We get a negative 8x because we're just multiplying by 1. And 1 times 3 is 3. So this box just has all of my terms in it. And the kind of cool thing about this is that when I finish multiplying it, my like terms, if there are some, they usually end up being on the diagonal. So my answer would be negative x to the fourth. This is my highest power in the first box. And then for x to the third, I'm going to have a total of 12 of those. For x squared, I've got negative 3, negative 32, and positive 1. So that's negative 34 x squared. Uh, for regular x's, I have a 12x and a negative 8x for a total of 4x. And then I've got that constant 3 down in the bottom. So this is our answer for those two trinomials multiplied together. Um, don't worry, you will not have to do very many of those in your life. Um, but I wanted to show you a strategy. The strategy of multiplying is called the box strategy. And it would work for smaller problems as well if you like the idea of uh, using that box to help you stay organized. So if you like that strategy, you can use it really on anything. And it is a pretty fast way if you like it. You know, that's just kind of personal preference, though. Okay, so now we want to do a set of three binomials that we multiply together. And we're going to use the same idea that we used here, we just need to pick two of them to multiply together, and then we'll multiply by the third one. So it doesn't matter which ones you pick. I'm going to just pick those first two to multiply together. So that would be x squared minus 6x plus 4x minus 24. So combining those middle terms gives us x squared minus 2x minus 24. And I need to multiply that by that third factor of x minus 5. So I can complete my multiplication now. x to the third minus 5x squared. Um, now I'm going to distribute the negative 2x. So this is 
negative 2x squared and negative, let's see, positive 10. And it's kind of different here maybe than it looked before because I have my trinomial written first, but it will work the same. Oh, hopefully you were thinking Miss Bricky forgot her x. I did, I forgot my x, so there it is. And then we'll have a negative 24x, and then 24 times 5 is a number. Sometimes I'm good at multiplying in my head, and sometimes my head is tired and is like, get out your calculator. Let's see, 24 times 5 is 120, and that will be a positive 120. So I kind of strategically wrote it so that they're lined up, so our answer here would be x to the third minus 7x squared minus 14x plus 100 and... 20. Okay. Uh, I'm going to write out how we would start this problem, but not going to do the whole thing. A third power, um, you know, squaring means multiply by itself. A third power means that you have that factor three times. So if I wanted to calculate 2x plus 1 to the third power, I would do 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 1, and then I would just use the strategy here of multiplying two of them together first and then multiplying by the third one. Okay, last problem, hardest problem. We want to create a polynomial in terms of x that represents the volume of this cylinder, and we want to report our answer in standard form. And the part of this that kind of makes it the hardest is the standard form part. All right, so we've got this cylinder here, or, or sorry, not cylinder. It says cylinder, but that's not a cylinder. It is a cone. Sorry, I think on your homework it's a cylinder. So um, the volume formula for a cone is one-third pi times r squared times h. So in this case, the radius of that cone is x minus 3, and the height of that cone is x plus 3. So what we're going to do is uh, just start this volume formula and sub in, wow, so one third, okay, one third pi. Uh, for in place of r, we are going to sub in the x minus three, and in place of the h, we are going to sub in the x plus three. So we we have written down the volume in terms of x. But we need to report our answer in standard form, and that means we need to multiply this out. So the first thing I want you to remember is that squaring just means something is multiplied by itself. So our x minus 3 needs to be multiplied by itself. So we've got two factors of x minus 3. So now we do need to multiply this together. Now I am going to pick, because I can choose which ones, I'm going to pick these two to multiply together because I notice that they are um, opposites. They are conjugates. So it's an x minus 3 and x plus 3. So when I multiply it together, I get x squared plus 3x minus 3x and then minus 9. Those middle terms add up to 0. So... What we have is an x squared minus 9. Now that was these two factors multiplied together. So I still have an x minus 3 over here. I still have a pi and I still have a 1 third. So now let's multiply these two together. So that gives me uh, x to the third power minus 9x minus 3x squared and then negative 9 times negative 3 is positive 27. So we multiplied those two binomials together. We still have the 1 third pi. So our last step, well, maybe last step, our last one of our last steps is to distribute that 1 third pi. It's just a number that we're going to multiply by. And we're going to multiply each of those four terms by it. 
So 1 third pi times x to the third is just going to be 1 third pi x to the third. 1 third pi times 9x, I'm going to write it over here, uh, negative I guess. Uh, maybe you notice, hey, it's a divide by 3 right there, and I've got a 9. So that 3 can divide that 9, so this term is going to be a negative 3 pi x. Our next term is a negative 3x squared, and we're multiplying it by 1 third pi. So the pi's on this term are actually, sorry, not the pi, the 3 on this term is actually going to cancel. So this is going to be minus pi x squared. And then our constant is 27. So we're multiplying that 27 by 1 third pi. So that's the same as 9 pi. So this is an equation for the volume of that cone in standard form. That is it. So kind of a lot of um, different types of examples. Hopefully you're feeling pretty comfortable with that distribution process. The assignment is in your packet. Let me know if you need any help with that. Thank you.